Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode six of the Firebird project. And last time we completed most of the work on the wings of the body. So this time we're gonna get the center block back on the bench and start to make that look a little bit more like a guitar by installing the truss rod. Now ordinarily, the truss rod on these guitars would be adjusted from the headstock. And what that means is a large portion of this headstock area has to be scooped out to allow access to do that. This has always been a bit of a weak spot on Gibson style guitars. And a big contributor to a lot of the Gibsons you see mine as a headstock and needing a repair. So I'm starting to move away from doing it that way as much as possible. A modern truss rod is better because it's got a smaller profile so you're not having to take quite so much meat out of this area but it's still in my eyes a bit of a compromise. So what I've done in the past on other styles of guitar and I'm intending to do on this one is to use one of these instead which is a two-way truss rod with this kind of wheel adjuster on. The beauty of these is there's no truss rod cover. You don't need to remove any screws or anything if you want to make a quick adjustment. It sits there and the adjuster just sits in the end of or beyond the end of the fretboard. In my case, I'm going to put it just in the end of the fretboard because in this case, the neck pickup ring sits right against the edge of the fretboard. So there's no space to have this wheel protruding. Fitting these truss rods is relatively straightforward, but you do need to be quite accurate with what you're doing. And also on this build, because of the way that the neck blank is configured, I want it to go in as centrally as possible, just so I'm not running into any problems with kind of the neck laminations looking out of alignment when we actually put this thing together. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Now I want this truss rod to sit absolutely perfectly central in this central stripe in the neck blank. So that means I need to be absolutely spot on when I'm routing this out. But I've got a really good technique for making sure that the router cutter is positioned in the right place before we do that. But we'll get to that in a little while. To prepare this blank, I've marked two locations on it. Up this end, we've got the location of the nut and this end is the end of the fretboard. And as we've already said, we want the end of this wheel to be flush with the end of the fretboard. So the first thing we need to do is get a center line onto this blank absolutely spot on in the center of this middle stripe. Now I've measured this block. It ranges one end it's 100.2 millimeters and at the other end it's 100.4 millimeters. So along this entire length it only varies by 0.2 of a mil. So for me I'm not worried about that especially as we're only working in this section here so that variance is going to be lessened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my marking gauge up to 50 mil. Having done that, I'm going to choose the edge nearest me just for convenience. And I'm going to mark that as the face and the edge and I'm always going to work off this edge from here on in and with that done I'll just start putting that center line in So I'm going to make this cut with a bog standard quarter inch straight cutting bit in the big router with a fence set up on it. Now it is quite difficult to actually get these centered unless you've got a little trick up your sleeve and in this case I do because what I'll do is use this little router bit with a point on and I'll set this up so that this point is sitting in the center line we've just marked on which it will do quite nicely. We'll adjust our fence to that and then we'll know as long as the fence doesn't move, we'll be cutting dead central to our workpiece.
that done, we've just swapped the cutter back to the, the straight cutter and we'll set the router up so that it'll plunge initially about a three mil cut. And then from there, we will take it down in increments to the depth which we need, which is usually about 10 millimeters. Yeah, it's nine and a quarter it's giving me. Okay, so that's the router set up with the depth stop where I need it to be for the initial pass. I've also marked the line on here, which is the actual end of the truss rod. So that's the line I need to stop at. So nothing really for it now, but to get the router fired up and get that first passing. Okay, so that's the bulk of the channel cut. It's gone very nicely, really happy with that. And the rod seems to fit nicely too, but there is a slight problem. It won't go in at this end because this part here is slightly fatter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out that quarter inch straight bit for a 3 8 bit, which is a hair fatter than this, but it's not so much that it will make a difference. And all I'll do I'll just make a mark where we need that to start. Now because the router's set up to be dead centered, we don't need to change that at all. We just need to swap the router bit out and it should, in theory, cut in exactly the same place. Of course, I'm not gonna do that until I've seen with my own eyes that, that is the case, but that's the theory behind it. So after a little bit of fiddling around, that's the truss rod in. It's all nice and flush with the neck material. So now it's just a case of marking up and cutting a little bit of relief in for this adjuster wheel. Now I'm not gonna do this with the router. I'm going to just trim it out with a chisel very quickly. There's hardly anything to remove. So the first thing I'll do is just Mark these lines in with a marking knife. And then I'll just work that out with a small chisel until the adjuster fits in. the truss rod installed. I've made sure that there's plenty of room around this adjuster so it's not going to bind when it's being adjusted and that's absolutely fine. You might notice I've also gone a little bit past that mark there. It's quite deliberate. I need some way of getting this in and out and also all of this section here will be removed once we do the pickup route so that this adjuster can come on and off should we ever need it to. So there it is, truss rod done. Now it might only seem like a little job, but it's another step in the right direction. And with this done, we can now think about how we're gonna cut out the rest of this central block to make it a little bit more guitar-like. So while it's only a little job, it is an important one. And now it's out of the way, we can start pushing forward. But that's gonna be for the next episode. I'm gonna leave this one here. So as always, drop me a like if you've enjoyed this one, found it useful, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.